I saw Abigail last night, so let's talk about it. What I like about this movie, this has nothing to do with the movie per se, but I, I love filmmaking teams. I love seeing directors, writers, cinematographers, even, you know, composers that kind of figured out that they work very well together. And so they keep doing things together. So we have Matt Gillett and, I'm sorry, no, Tyler Gillett and Matt Bettinelli Open, who are part of Radio Silence Productions. They did the last two Scream movies, Ready or Not. And then we have Guy Busick, who also did writing for the last two, two Scream movies, plus Ready or Not. And now they're back with Abigail. With teams, there is a sense of continuity. It's almost like their work creates its own genre. And you know what you're gonna get. You know what to expect because you know their style. And you're also able to see the progression when you have certain directors and writers working together, as is this case. Um, so let, let's see, let's talk about it. It's a nice little cast. We have Angus Cloud in his final role, Melissa Barrera, who has obviously worked with this team before in the last two screen movies. We have Alicia Ware, who was in Matilda, the Netflix uh, musical Last Christmas. Catherine Newton, who was just in Lisa Frankenstein. Dan Stevens, William Catlett, Kevin Durand, Giancarlo Esposito. So a nice little cast. This ragtag group of thieves kidnaps what they think is a 12 year old girl in an effort to get a $50 million payout from her father. As it turns out, her father is a big crime boss who is incredibly dangerous, has a legendary, you know, urban legend kind of hitman who is known for getting in places that seem impossible, tearing people limb from limb, organs coming out. Valdez is who this assassin is called. And all of a sudden, you know, things start happening in the house and they think Valdez must be here. How did we get found out? Who betrayed us? So on and so forth. And as it turns out, things are not what they seem. And this little girl isn't quite who she, who she says she is. It's a trap. I'm not gonna keep you here super long. I don't think there is a whole lot to really say here about this movie. This is one of those movies that there's no point in taking it seriously because it doesn't take itself seriously. This isn't meant to be a cinematic masterpiece. This isn't meant to bake, break any ground. This isn't meant to be competitive in any way. This is just jolly old, good, entertaining, bloody gore fun. And that was my expectation going into this movie because we had this team, these two directors, the writer. I expected this to be a roller coaster ride. I expected this to be a lot of fun. The last two Scream movies were just so much fun. And they seem to have a knack for creating, that's what I call them, roller coaster rides out of horror movies. They figured out a way to make that blurry mess of a movie fun and enjoyable, almost like we're kind of, we're along for the ride. Keep saying that, but that's what I like about this team. So that's what I was expecting from this film. Just good fun. If not good fun, there will be carnage. Either way, I'm gonna be happy. The movie starts off cringy, and that's how I felt just watching the acting, these characters interacting with one another, but also these characters are most likely strangers. They don't know one another. They don't know anyone's first names. They've just been recruited together to do this job based on their own individual skills. And I just felt like the acting was just very wooden. It's kind of cringy, and it's almost like they were acting bad on purpose. And I was just very confused at first, like, why is this so bad? But I also wondered if it was intentional, if this was part of the, we're not taking this very seriously, but also we want to create some distance between you, the audience, and these characters. We don't want you to care about them too much. So that, that would be my first question to the filmmakers here is the initial cringe. Was I supposed to be cringed out? Was that intentional? Or was I supposed to take that seriously? But these guys know what they're doing. So so it makes me think that maybe that cringe, that distance, that almost dis intentional dislike that I felt for some of these characters at first was intentional. I will say Angus Cloud's character, um, I did not like him at all. I thought he was obnoxious. I wanted him to stop talking. Um, I was ready for him to go. And I just, I just did not like him from the jump. And that's why I think it makes I, that's why I think this might have been intentional. There's no way you could have thought a character written like that would have been likable by the audience. There's no way. 
But let's say for argument's sake that this is intentional. I think it speaks to the type of experience these filmmakers are trying to create. They don't want to just give you a quality film, which I think the film is quality, it's a good movie, but they also want you to have fun with it. They want this to be a fun ride. They want you to be entertained. They want you to leave the film with a smile on your face knowing, you know what, that was a good time. And I think they did that. This is a personal preference, but I love movies that take place in one setting. We're trapped in this house. I, I love the claustrophobic feeling of being trapped. And I think they do a very good I, I think they do a very good job in the limited time of allowing us to feel trapped with them. Now, again, like I said, at the beginning it starts off for me a little cringy, but it fades into a sense of cinematic realism where the characters seem to fall into their characters. Once we've gotten a good, you know, sense of what we don't like about these characters, we start they start to fall into being human and we start to see the humanity with them. And it's easier to walk with them in this story. Like Catherine Newton's character, um, she was just obnoxious, like smacking her gum and just, you know, very ditzy. And like, you could tell, you know, rich girl trying to hang it with the big boys. And after a minute, she just started to just be human. And she started to be really, really funny. And I really started to like her character. But from the jump, did not like her at all. But eventually I, I settled with her. I settled. Now Angus Cloud's character, uh-uh, I never settled. I was ready for him to go, ready. I'm gonna be real, Melissa Barrera, I think she's gorgeous, she's stunning. She's just, she's a beauty. She's such a regal, old school beauty. As far as her acting, I'm just not quite sold. She's not my favorite. She does fine, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying she's bad in the movie or she's good. I'm just saying for me, I just, I don't feel it with her. I just don't. Even in the Scream movies, I feel like it's more Jenna Ortega's vehicle than hers, even though I feel like she plays more of a leading role than Jenna Ortega. But I think Jenna Ortega just naturally outshines whoever is on screen with her. She just does. But um, I'm waiting for her, I'm waiting for that movie where it clicks for me with her. I'm not saying she has to prove anything to me, like who am I? But I know it's there. I know she's got it. I'm, I'm just waiting for something to click. I'm waiting for that moment to click and it just hasn't with me yet with her. But I think she's fine. She looks good. She leads well. This is something about, her. just it hasn't clicked for me. I'm just waiting for that moment to click. I'm just waiting. It's gonna happen though. I believe it. Now the standout here, if we're gonna be real, we're gonna be honest. The standout here is Alicia Ware, little Irish actress. We remember her from Matilda. If you're on TikTok, you know last Christmas, that movie, the promotion for that movie had the entire app in a chokehold. We were all obsessed. Like the promotion was next level. And she's an incredible young lady, very talented. She's a singer, actress, dancer, you know, and minus the singing, this is a role that was made for her because you know, vampire ballerina. She does dance in this. She does some contortion work. I, I have to imagine that some of that is her own doing. It'd be nice to see some behind the scenes to see if that was a body double. Um, I imagine some of the things where they were throwing her around was a body double, but any of the, like the um, contortion and acro work, I wonder if that was her. But she did get to show off some of her dancing skills in this. She's very talented, but her performance, oh my gosh. I'm calling it now. I mean, she was incredible in Matilda. She's great. She was wonderful. Um, but I think this side of her in Abigail just the levels to which she played her vulnerability and strength, giving the wholeness in this character that I wonder if the, e, the, the script even called for. You, it felt like she took it to the next level because the, the, the rest of the cast was kind of here and she took it there. She really just took it to the next level and, and pushed them and pulled them. She, they were following her lead. I don't know if they realized it, but they were following her lead. She was incredible. Just the, the mic, I've talked about this on my TikTok, but like just the subtle changes in her faces, the way, she, the way she works her eyes, being able to go from being scared and vulnerable to being in charge and being scary and terrifying. The stunt work that she obviously had to do, um, the inflections in her voice, the maturity, the way she was able to balance being this little girl and obviously this, you know, hundreds of year old, hundreds of years old creature. Uh, she did well. She just, the performance alone is enough to make me want to go watch it a second time. Her performance is just captivating, satisfying almost. She, she's like butter with it. It was such a smooth, well done quality performance. 
I can't wait to see what else she has in the works. She's talented. She's a talent to watch. This is a very simple movie. We're not doing anything new. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're not, you know, giving a new spin on, you know, the vampire trope. There's nothing new being done here, but it's a fun ride of a movie. Definitely worth a ticket. That's honestly all I've got to say about it. I enjoyed it. If you go and see it this weekend, let me know what you think. Until then, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You guys are amazing. I love you, and I will see you next time.